This is original footage of a video which I shoot it in low light. It has a lot of problems. When shooting in low light, a lot of noise often forms in the picture. Flickering occurs in the bright lights and motion blur is inevitably captured in the images. There is lens flare and in addition the image vibrates strongly at the points where the camera tries to stabilize and smooth the movement. The video looks unusable and this kind of a material can hardly be used to make 3D models. Or can it? Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here again and this time my discoveries with the Gaussian splatting technique has taken me to scan in the dark. Some time ago I came across a research paper that dealt with the topic of how NERF models can be created from HDR images taken in a low light. Even though Gaussian splatting is a slightly different technique than NERF, I was interested in trying what kind of models could be created from images shot in the dark and low light situations. If you have followed me and watched my previous videos, you may have noticed that I like to use a 360 camera for 3D scanning. And since my Insta360 RS1 camera has a 1 inch sensor, which is said to be very good for shooting in low light, I decided to try it out in my neighborhood as soon as the sun went down. My previous shooting experiments in the dark have been quite bad, because the image accumulates a lot of noise and even if I get the settings somewhat right, the cameras I use have a very challenging time shooting video in low light. So I was skeptical for a reason and quite sure that a decent 3D scan would certainly not be made from this kind of a video material. Since not all the frames in the video are needed in the process, they are broken down in the sequences where only every tenth of the images is used to calculate the point cloud. So there will inevitably be bad pictures where motion blur is visible and unfavorable lens reflections and noise remains visible. Despite all this, I managed to convert a point cloud from these low-light images and trained the caution splatting model out of it with as many iterations as needed. And it all happened surprisingly lightly. Maybe that's why creating the point cloud was so light because it doesn't find enough reference points in the dark source images and the model therefore remains much smaller and lighter. So the end result turned out to be surprisingly good. I was amazed how the Gaussian translation managed to remove almost all the errors and mistakes that were in the original video. Because Gaussian splatting creates static model with only one still moment captured in it, it shows no noise or light flickering. Thus everything else that moves from original source is left out of the image, such as vibration, motion blur and lens flares. Based on this I got excited to convert and train other videos that I have recorded from different locations. It really seems that Gaussian splatting works especially well in low light. In some parts it can create even better images than the original. And the frozen moment it creates is hazily precise and it somehow gives the image quite an artistic look. Although the images taken from the model are not totally perfect with floating artifacts and do not always work from all angles, it is still fascinating to rotate a 3D model in real time and make perfectly smooth camera movements around it. And of course you can do this with other cameras as well. And the better features the camera has for shooting in low light, the better end results of the 3D model will be. 
It doesn't have to be a 360 camera. I personally like to use it because with the selfie stick you can easily reach different angles and you don't have to worry about if the camera is definitely pointing in the right direction. All of that can be fixed in the post-processing. One thing I have noticed in this process is that calculating the point cloud succeeds the better the less lens distortion there is in the source images. That's why I use the natural view feature when editing 360 footage in Insta360 Studio. It removes the fisheye distortion and turns the image into the correct perspective view. And I rarely use the full equi rectangular image. I prefer to crop the image to 16 by 9 aspect ratio and rotate the view to show the area that I want to 3D scan. This way I can also cut myself out of the 360 picture. All in all, this was interesting practical experiment that showed that Corsen splatting works very well in low light and that the model can be built even if the source material looks terrible at first. What do you think about this? Do you have experiments and tips for shooting video in low light? Leave your comments below and in the meantime I will continue to explore this interesting and exciting topic further. See you again next time. Thanks for watching.